Save 6% off your next order. Use code NIKKI6. I bet you that code works on just about everywhere. Nothing wrong with that. Anyway, just wanted to share a few recent acquisitions. Let me get the lighting right here. Get the point. We got a Crestline Gibson GA 5T Skylark. Pretty neat. Um, coolest thing about this uh, beast is um, these capacitors are completely empty. They're hollow. Um, we're still waiting on smell-o vision, so I guess touch-o vision is uh, out of the question. But these things are completely hollow. The uh, capacitive goodness that was once inside there has dissolved into the ether. But, uh, yeah. Dial that up on the Variac, see what happens. But it, uh, looks like it's been, well, for the most part, uh, untouched by human hands, so that'll be fun. Stay tuned for that one. Next on the chopping block, we got this cool thing. Uh, this amp's probably older than Methuselah. Hello in there! I have no idea what it is. Other than it's cool. Here's the chassis. Look at that. They do not make them like this anymore. Probably for good reason. But uh, transformers appear to still work, so uh, this won't be uh, touched anytime soon, but someday. Take a look at the front of this bad boy. Yeah, that's all you get. You get one knob. That's all you need. You don't even need that. You just need an amp. You turn it on, and it's on 10. That's all you really need. Next up, what we have here. Sorry about the lighting. Is Sound Electronics Corporation model X305R. Sorry, everything's all disassembled and stuff. Uh, I know you guys probably want to see this stuff in their native habitat, but everything I have is in uh, various states of disrepair. But check this out. Look at the wiring on this. I mean, that's just high watt levels of anal retentiveness. This will be uh, done soon, hopefully. So we'll get to hear what it sounds like. Um, let me flip it over for you. Alright, here's the business end. It's got some respectable iron. A bunch of tubes. And uh, I've already started working on this. Yeah, check this out. All the effort they put into that awesome wiring. And that's what they put their filter caps on. It's like, are you serious, guys? It's like, uh, we're, we're missing a part. Oh, just cut out a rectangle out of your box of cornflakes. That, that'll do. There go. So I'm replacing that. Um... Gonna put a couple of terminal strips here and uh, put the filter caps in and make this real nice because that's really the only deficiency in this thing and this will be a real beaut. And uh, let me show you the cab. Here's the cab for the Sound Electronics Corp X305R. Has a 15 inch speaker, Jensen gold back. Yeah, this will be pretty nice when it's all done. Sorry about the camera work, but we're doing the best we can. But, uh, it's pretty nice. Great Tolex. It's in real good shape. Can't wait until the sucker's done. What could this be? Well, this may be the subject of a new segment called Pimp My Guitar Amp. It's almost done, but uh, I've learned a few things since I started it, so I want to go back and 
fix a few things, make it legit. But uh, stay tuned for that. Same bad time, same bad channel. The note for this room should be F sharp above high C. Should be fun. All right, now this is where things start to get a little weird. Uh, when I got this thing, the seller thought it was a Ampeg rocket. Uh, no, it's not a rocket. Uh, long story short, took me a long time to figure out what it is. It's an Ampeg Dolphin 2 Model 6015. Now, I wrote to Ampeg and I said, what the heck is this thing? And they told me what it was. That's how I figured that out. They were really cool. They got back to me quick. Uh, but they did say, good luck getting a schematic, even if there was a schematic. Things were done kind of willy-nilly back in the day, so best of luck to you. So unlike every other Ampeg Dolphin, let me show you. This one's a little bit weird. All right, so here we are on the back side. Now, there's supposed to be an upper and a lower chassis. Unfortunately, somebody unceremoniously removed the lower chassis, and that's basically gone forever. Cancel the circumcision. So I'm going to have to build that from scratch. Problem is, again, good luck getting a schematic. The upper chassis is the preamp, and it's got four tubes. Now, if we look at the tube chart, the model, I don't know if you can see that, the model 6015, this one here. So the lower chassis will have five tubes. And I think all but, so we're talking nine tubes total. And I think all but one of the tubes are either dual triodes or a combination triode pentode. What in the heck? So we got five tubes down here. We got two power tubes, got your phase inverter. Okay, there's no reverb on this thing. What in the heck are these other tubes, two, two tubes doing? <gasps> yeah. So, uh, yeah, you won't be seeing this anytime soon. But uh, definitely cool. It's 1958. I don't think I mentioned that yet. But good times. And, uh, don't know if this speaker is original to it, but... Pretty cool anyway, what is that? Jensen, yeah. Jensen, yeah, 17th week of 59. Maybe it is. Cool stuff. All right, hang on, I got one more. Okay, so if the Ampeg was the mystery, this here is the Enigma. What we've got here is a Magnetone Troubadour Model 213 in combo cab with a 15 inch speaker what huh? the little research that i did magnetone never made a combo with a 15 inch speaker so what the heck is this thing and as you can see the chassis fits in this cab perfectly uh, may have just been a coincidence or a happy accident. I don't know, but it, it's, I mean, it's like it was built for it. Um, but the cab, you look at the cab, you know, the colors aren't quite magnetone. Kind of looks like an Ampeg Gemini 2 cab, but the Gemini 2s, the bottom of the cab is, you know, almost at the right at the bottom of the speaker. And also, uh, this area right here is like, half as wide so that's odd let me flip this thing around we'll take a look at the back all right here we are looking uh up our backside that's what she said that's my joke damn it dwight and so i mean this cab looks legit i mean the patina if you will of the wood the materials they use look, you know, period correct. You know, it doesn't look like any shenanigans went 
on and up in here to make this chassis fit. I mean, this cab looks like it was built for this chassis. So either there was some real eccentric nut job. that went through a lot of work to make this happen or this is a magnetone one-off that probably belongs in a museum. Um, I don't think that's the case. I think it was just a happy accident somebody found a cab that this thing fit into. But still, it's kind of neat. Kind of like the way he was thinking. And uh, we got a nice uh, Jensen concert. I don't know if you can read that. Nah, no, it's probably harder to read, but yeah, nice 15-inch concert speaker, and check out these groovy tubes. 6V6 GT. Japan. Not messing around with this. But yeah, this is, uh, I don't know, you guys, you tell me, is this legit, or what, what the heck's going on here? You know, and if it's not legit, what do you do? Do you... You know, get this back home to where it belongs in a, you know, 12-inch combo cab. Or or what do you do? Or just, you know, go forth with whatever this, whoever was doing this uh, had in mind and make a troubadour in a 15-inch combo cab. You know, I think I'm going to do that because, I mean, everybody and their uncle has a troubadour model 213, so who needs another one of those when I mean, you can have this? But, uh, yeah, something to look forward to. Stay tuned for that. Hope everyone enjoyed the video, and, uh, yeah, keep on rocking in the free world. Done!